So I am about to start my next project and what my project is is I recently installed a pergola in my backyard and I need power for the pergola. Um, I have string lights and I might want to have you know a, you know some music out there or, or you know whatever maybe a fan but I need power for the pergola. Now I could lay an extension cord across the yard every time I wanted to you know power the pergola but that's not practical and I'm not going to have an electrician come out just for you know the pergola so I thought why don't we just use a solar generator on the pergola and even better what if we build the solar generator into the furniture so what I have is this um, it's it's you know wood looking container but it's actually plastic it has a removable lid and um, this can be like a side table for the furniture and you can put your beers and whatever on it but it's also going to have power built into it I have waterproof outlets USBs batteries inverters solar charge controllers all of that and that is going to go inside of this and um, from the outside all you'll have is a waterproof outlet and maybe USB and maybe a switch um, and so we are going to put a, you know, this, the contents of a solar generator inside of this. And, you know, you can, you can then put a, say, a solar panel on top of your pergola and, and charge this up when not in use. Now, I actually have my four solar panels on my house not far from the, where the pergola is. So I'm actually going to tap a single one of my solar panels and feed it over to the pergola um, so I can charge this up when I need to. Now, may, why you you know why only one of my solar panels when I have four solar panels? Well, I am using a boost um, charge controller for this, and my panels are wired in series, so my panels all together are over seventy volts. Well, that'd be too much voltage to charge this up using a boost solar charge controller. So I'm going to take a single solar panel put it into the boost controller and it'll take the 20 volts from the solar panel and boost it to 29 volts that the battery needs. So uh, that's the plan and let me show you some of the components that are going to go inside of this. Okay, here are the other components that I'm going to put inside that box. Um, I guess we'll start with the battery. Um, this is an old battery I have left over from a um, Actually, from my very first solar charge controller, this is the battery that I used in it. Um, it is about a kilowatt. Um, so it's a good size. It's not huge, but it's also not small. It's a kilowatt battery. Um, it has a, um, um, I think this is a, uh, let me look. Yeah, 45 amp BMS on it, which is more than enough for what I'm going to power. And um, it is uh, 16 cells in parallel by 7 across. So it's a 7S16P battery. Like I said, a little over a kilowatt. Um, and these are LG cells. Um, I forget what I salvaged these from. Um, I think these were before modem packs. I think these actually came out of laptop batteries, if I recall. The first cells I ever salvaged came out of lap laptop batteries. These might be those. But anyways, um, they are all LG cells. I found some deal on, on matching laptop batteries. And they're all LG cells, 2200 milliamps. Anyways, this will be a good battery to, to power this. And like I said, I actually just had this lying around, so that's perfect. This is the inverter. It is a pure sine wave inverter. It's uh, 2,000 watts, although I I'm sure it's overrated. Uh, originally, I had ordered this for my main power wall, but it actually took so long to ship, and for a while I thought it was lost in shipping that I ended up ordering a, you know, a uh, an, a, a uh, higher quality um, inverter from a you know, American seller. And um, I've been very happy with the, the Powerwall inverter that I do have. 
But this did eventually show up, so I have this lying around, and it is 24 volts to 110 volts. Uh, um, and I have quickly powered this on, it does work. So since I have this lying around, I'm going to use it. Again, it is way overkill. Um, I mean, I really only need more like a 500 watt inverter, but I have it. Might as well put it to use. This is the uh, solar charge controller. You saw me testing this in a previous video. Um, and I'm going to use this to boost a single solar panel up to recharge the battery and, and um, this is uh, going to go in there. I'm going to have a main power cutoff switch that I can um, just shut everything off when we're done. Um, and so I'll probably mount this on the outside. I also have this, which uh, this is like a weatherproof outlet um, that I got off Amazon. Pretty expensive, I think it was like $25. But it is very well made and completely weatherproof and got a gasket and, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll drill a hole and, and mount this on the, outside of the, uh, on the outside of the box and then this can plug right into the inverter and this will be where I can get power out of the box without opening the box. And then I do have a, uh, I have a, a USB, a weatherproof USB as well that'll go on the outside in case I need to power any USB devices on there. But then I chose this one because this is one that has the uh, meter inside of it. So this way I can see what the battery voltage is at. Um, um, you know, even with the lid closed, you can see what the uh, what the battery voltage is. And um, th this claimed to be weatherproof as well. Um, so hopefully this will last. But this will, you know, I'm not going to have any fancy meters or anything. I'll just visually check the voltage to know um, when you know when it's time to you know when the when the battery's running low. But the inverter should turn off at about 20, 21 volts, and the BMS should turn off at about twenty volts. So you know this thing should sort of look after itself. But this will just be a quick visual indicator of how much life I have in the uh, in the battery. Um, I might also, um, I'll probably also put a fan in the in the box. Um, the thing is, this is going to live outdoors, so you kind of want it to be weatherproof. But it's impossible, you know, if you're going to have any sort of airflow, it's impossible to make it weatherproof. So the trick is then to just know that water will get in, and just have drainage holes and places for the water to get out, and and. You know, make sure the components are sort of lifted up off the bottom of the box so that they don't get water on them. And so that will be my plan. I'm gonna put a like a backing board in the center of of the box that I can mount this and the battery to, and it'll probably be on on some standoffs just to lift it a little bit off the uh, off the floor of the box, um, so that if water does get in, I'll put a few drainage holes. The water can sort of drain out. Um, you know, because like I said. On with you know on things that are outside, water has a way of getting into it. So the best you can do is is make provisions for it to drain out, and so that's what we'll do. Anyways, uh, I guess uh, I'll stop here and start planning how I'm gonna build this thing, and I'll bring you back when I'm mid build. Okay, so I have a finished assembling everything, and this is the finished product. This is the only side with any connections, and this will sort of go at the back of the, you know, this will be as a side table, and then these will sort of point back away from the furniture. Um, your bottom is your waterproof plug. That's your main power switch. That's your USB with meter, and that is the solar input uh, that goes to the charge controller. You can turn on the main power, and you can see the battery is at 28.9 and the inverter just beep, meaning it's ready. So this plug is now live. Uh, let me see if I have something to... Uh, you can see that's now alive, that is a live plug. Um, so let me lay this on its side and show you inside. Okay, you can see inside the uh, the case now. I mounted this board 
horizontally across the middle and then I built a battery um, case with just a just a piece of wood I built a big U that the battery slots into and it has a it has a cross brace to hold the battery in place and it can, the battery just slots in place the battery wires come around the negative goes directly onto the inverter and all the negatives for all the for the USB the charge controller all those negatives go onto this terminal this terminal is acting like a bus bar for the negative um, so the charge controller goes through that and basically back into the battery the USB comes off and goes down to the USB over there and then what I did is I made the um, the main power switch at the back there that is the positive bus bar for everything so the USB goes to that switch the sort of charge controller goes down to that switch and the inverter goes down to that switch so the that main power switch is the positive battery terminal and the um, you know the, the negative on the inverter is acting as the negative terminal um, the USB is wired directly onto the off the battery it's rated for up to 24 volts but it does handle the 29 volts I have tested this before and you could you saw the meter was accurate it said 28.9 volts which is what this battery is currently charged to so that's that's great. So the, the the USB is directly off the battery. That power switch is just a um, battery cutoff switch that I had from an old project. And um, they, it claims to be rated for like 100 amps, but there's no ways. It's, it's tiny inside and it's probably only good for, you know, 25, 30 amps, which is perfect for this sort of project because I'm not going to be running anything super high load. Um, and then I have the, um, at the very bottom is the... Um, the weatherproof outlet which goes directly into the bottom of the inverter so that's just plugged into the inverter like a regular outlet um, and the uh, the inverter is left turned on um, so that when you turn on the main switch the inverter turns on and the USB turns on I have no other switches that's by design when I turn this thing on I want everything to come on and then this is the solar charge controller um, this is its uh, this is its wire right here through this barrel jack and that goes to the solar input and the solar output goes um, down to the battery through the, the, the two terminals. Um, the, the box does not have to be on for the solar to charge the battery. The, um, the, 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 I've wired the solar charge controller where it effectively bypasses the switch. Um, again, that is by design so that I can plug this into solar at any time and it will charge the battery regardless of whether I have the box turned on or off. Um, but yeah, that's a quick overview of this box and I'll show, show you the box in action in a little bit. So the solar generator for the pergola is finished and uh, you can see the lights are all lit up. The um, solar generator that's in there is powering everything and I can uh, drop in my solar power whenever I need to to recharge it so I think that's uh, a good project complete